onions were pink, the beer is blue, so peas are purple. So about 150 years ago, people were very interested in synesthesia, and it sort of dropped out of the scientific consciousness for, uh, for the last century. And the reason is the school of behaviorism took over, where people were interested in treating humans like black boxes, input-output devices. And you weren't allowed to talk about what it's like to be on the inside anymore. So people stopped being interested in consciousness and what it's like to actually perceive the world. And it's only in the last 20 years or so that the, the question has re-emerged. So synesthesia has had a real renaissance in the last couple of decades where people want to understand what is the neural basis of perception and how is it that some people perceive the world differently than other people? What is it like to see differently from the inside? And I don't know when I necessarily first became aware of it because it seems like it's always been there, but I know that I was definitely playing with it when I was five or six years old because I remember reading my parents' record cabinet, searching for records that I liked to listen to for the colors. Synesthesia is an involuntary, unconscious, automatic linking of perceptions. A stimulus in one sense might trigger a perception in another sense. It's just sort of always been just the way I think. It's just one has always been yellow, you know, certain letters have always been certain colors. The days of the week are pretty, pretty, well, they're terribly consistent. Monday is red. And my mother said when I was five years old, no, 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 Monday's blue, blue Monday. We don't hear with just our ears alone. We don't smell just with our noses. We don't taste just with our tongues. Hey, wait a minute, Doc. After 20 years behind this camera, you're not going to tell me I don't see with my eyes, are you? No, in a strict sense, you don't, Hal. Your eyes, like your other sense organs, simply receive impressions from the outside and send them on to the brain. The senses are all different. The signals are all alike. Yeah, but then how could the brain know which sense is sending the message? Well, you've just asked the big question. That brings us up to the brain. This back portion of your brain is almost entirely devoted to vision. And there's a particular area of the brain that cares in particular about color. The part of your brain that would be sticking out here cares about language and words and letters. And somehow in a synesthetic brain, these areas are connecting to these areas so that words and letters will trigger a color experience. I have grapheme color synesthesia and um, so basically I associate um, most letters and all numbers with, with some sort of color. One alone by itself is, is yellow, um, but four is also yellow, but it's a more golden yellow. Some of the, some of the differences are very, very subtle, but they're, they're definitely distinct differences in my mind. Synesthetic perceptions can be unpleasant every once in a while. But then again, so could your sense of smell. If you're able to smell something, you probably have experienced really pleasant odors like fresh baked cookies, your favorite home cooked meal, your favorite perfume, and you've also experienced very unpleasant odors such as a filthy public restroom or vomit or manure. You've experienced extremely unpleasant odors. Do you want to permanently lose your sense of smell? I definitely like having the color associations. Um, it's it's an interesting thing to, to talk about, and um, and it's it's kind of it's it's kind of neat to have. And actually, once I once I realized that I could actually use colors to help me remember number sequences and things like that, that was actually kind of useful. Synesthesia is not a disease. It's not a disorder. It's not something that is in any way a symptom of some other major problem. It's not something that you need to get rid of. It's an alternate way of perceiving the world. 
for years I've been trying to understand, I'm not a synesthete, I've been trying to understand what it's like to have synesthesia. And the closest sort of analogy, which I think works, is something like this. If I were to show you a photograph of Barack Obama, you would immediately think Barack Obama. Even though those words aren't written anywhere there, just seeing his face, you would immediately think those words. An important thing to understand about synesthesia is it's not the same as a hallucination. So when a synesthete sees the letter T and experiences some sort of yellow in his mind's eye, it's not the same as a hallucination. He knows that the T is in fact in black ink and that there's not yellow out there. So it's not the sort of thing that would cause a car accident and it's not the type of thing that would count as a hallucination or something one would have to worry about. So the most popular theory to explain synesthesia is that in different areas of the brain you actually have cross wiring, you have more wiring in a synesthetic brain that causes these areas to talk to each other more. I don't favor that theory, instead I favor a second hypothesis which is that the amount of wiring is the same in everybody's brain. Instead what's different is there's a, there's a slight difference in the balance of excitation and inhibition such that activity here will cause activity here because there's not enough inhibition of that activity. The reason I favor the hypothesis that the wiring is the same in everybody is because non-synesthetes can experience synesthesia. So for example, when people take drugs like LSD or DMT, they'll experience synesthesia. Also, many non-synesthetes, when they're very fatigued, right when they're falling asleep, somebody might slam a door and they'll see colors. So this implies that everybody is capable of a synesthetic experience. Also, for synesthetes, the amount of their experience waxes and wanes. So for example, when they are drunk with alcohol, or they're very tired, or they're very emotional or stressed out, their synesthesia tends to be much richer and more intense. And in other cases, when they're on certain drugs like antidepressants, their synesthetic experience goes down. And this has the feeling of something that is involved in inhibition in the brain rather than wiring because there's no reason to expect that your wiring would change based on emotion and fatigue and so on. So it doesn't matter if my Tuesday is blue, green, or yellow. The fact that it's anything um, may or may not mean something to someone else, but if it does, it doesn't matter if his is orange or purple. So it turns out what we learned from synesthesia is that some people perceive reality in a different way than the rest of us. And this is probably true in many different ways that we haven't even discovered yet. Synesthesia just happens to be a very good inroad into understanding how this works and what's different about some people's brains that causes them to have a different reality 